So how did I learn to run a call center? Well, the first thing I want to say is most people don't know how to run a call center. It's not me being pushy or arrogant. It's the fact is the majority of people are salespeople. Salespeople don't know IT. IT people don't know sales. Not one single person knows how to run all of it. But they will often push it that way. Whatever the problem is, we can fix it. Blah, blah. You know the sales field. Reality is you need a combination of people. Where we, When we started, we started off with our own call center and a friend who was just going through the process of setting up his own. His call center, um, his primary advantage over us was A, he'd been working as a supervisor in call centers and come from a call center background. His brother is an IT expert, and he also had several IT experts relating to dialers. From our point of view, we wanted to help their business grow as well as our own. And one of the things I have is the white face. It may sound racist, but as I said before, this whole market is pushed on the white face. That's why a lot of call centers in the US, UK, whatever, they will not say they outsource stuff. They will not openly admit it. They'll actually give you non-disclosure agreements. So they obviously know that that is the truth because a lot of customers in the UK, US, whatever, are tired of hearing Indian accent voices, etc. on the phone. As such, they don't want to admit that these people are in India. They're, I've seen scripts where people say, no, we're in Bradford, Manchester, whatever doesn't matter but the point being is we work together now the other side of this being when all the call centers started moving out of the west and into the east you had your call centers in india and pakistan which were tier one tier one are basically the corporates own call centers and those they've worked with partnered with and then what happens is you get a trickle effect because after one two years these guys quit there and set up their own call centers, have a connection with the first tier. So they then start feeding work from this one to this one because they'll do it cheaper. Because obviously the corporates will pay a lot more um, as such. There's a bit of flexibility in it for these guys to the point that there's guys under them that have left this one. And obviously some other guys leave here and set up another one. So they'll feed off this one. It works like that. So you can have up to nine tiers. But the first guy might get $150, $200 a sale. The guy right at the bottom might get 20 But this guy at the top is getting a cut of every single sale all the way down. You know, it's like a pyramid scheme, basically. So that's how the tiers work. And when we first started, the call center we were associated with must have been about tier five or six. Because when I looked at it, the merchant account only produced $20 a sale. And I seen it as non-viable. You will get your agent or whatever constantly go, oh, yeah, yeah, the other call centers are making money. No, they're not. What they're needing is you to keep that going. Because if you're losing money, they're still making money. They have no overheads as an agent. So... We did it for, I think, about a week, and I looked at it, and I just thought, this doesn't work. There's not a profit in this. So we moved on to solar, and solar, we started at a lower rate, and we slowly worked our way up because our performance was good. We were outperforming most of the other centers. So even on lower rates, we were doing well because our, our um, conversion rates were quite high. Also, there's an important bit here that a lot of call centers don't have, which is my ability to run a dialer properly. Most call centers don't have somebody that really sits there and understands it. I'm not saying I understand it 100%, but my running costs on a dialer is probably at least 30 to 40% cheaper than everybody else. But that also means that the conversion rates on the staff getting good calls to them per hour is higher as well because all the junk is filtered out automatically, et cetera, et cetera. So I spent a month learning how to do the dialer, which is why when the call center was doing merchant and starting to learn solar, I was doing 16 hours a day understanding the service. How did I learn the service? First thing I did was download the software. The software is free. There's no real manual with it because everybody sells how to as an extra. 
I just sat there and grabbing bits off the internet started to understand how it worked as it progressed I got better and better at it um, getting lead information um, that was a little, little more complex but as the business developed we got more and more access to things and as, as such getting the entire call list of an entire country became accessible and in some cases it was free uh, purely because of the relationship with other people these are the bits nobody talks about in the call center industry but that's this is the reality so the call center the actual training of staff I would verse my wife my wife would verse the staff because Filipinos deal with Filipinos better obviously the translation issue is also there so explaining it to my wife my wife grasping what I meant and then it, she would then explain it in a way that's easier for Filipinos to understand um, because culturally people are, culturally people are different but also people get a bit uptight and worried when talking to a foreigner so it's always easier to get Filipinos to deal with Filipinos it's why my supervisors managers etc are all Filipinos so how did it progress from here to here well the next thing is I used the white face because I started contacting people direct I started networking with people in New York net networking with Americans locally to tap into their networks to see if they could actually market the business for me I was also trying to market myself did a lot online etc trying to draw in a few clients now the other thing with my business is I will not let people run up debts um, there's lots of people had it I, I mean I would estimate I probably lost about fourteen thousand dollars in losses uh, that's cash I've written off as a complete loss but at the same time I've made a lot more but I don't let people run debt up because one of the things the there's a guy in Pakistan what he does a he pretends to be American but B he will run the first week and then go oh the payments late uh, he's supposed to pay you on the Friday Saturday but then he'll run it till the next Tuesday and then if we can drag it out he'll drag it out the next week and he's trying to increase the number of agents because if he's not happy with the performance or he thinks he's better off just getting rid of you he will keep all the sales money etc for himself um, he's done that in at least eight to ten call centers that I'm aware of myself I just run it got paid got rid of him um, because we were performing but at the same time I knew there was skimming going on and we were making a profit but at the same time not to the levels I was happy with so once we reached a certain goal and then he was messing me about because one of the things he didn't like was I just say okay we'll put you on stop till we get paid because then they're like well don't you want to make money was well not when you already owe me three and a half thousand dollars no um, I'd rather not work with you once you pay your debt then we'll take forward I can go on to something else until you actually pay your debt they're not used to people being that aggressive with it but that's the way you have to be many a call center in the Philippines has gone bankrupt because of people like that the, these middleman agents they're notoriously bad people um, they have no conscience in bankrupting, bankrupting a call center by stealing their money bear in mind this is not poor performance this is where they've literally stolen their money by just not paying them and I've seen it um, where was that there was one of those online freelancer type things for security alarm systems where people are running a month and then pay at the end of the I didn't see them pay anybody and I when I seen it I'm like you got no chance there's no way I would even run three to five agents for a month for free in the hope that you'll pay me at the end of the month you either pay at the end of the week I'm not interested and that's that's why I'm a little bit different because a lot of people will let these people run up debts don't let them do it I'll tell you now you don't owe them nothing you may be desperate for work but you'll be cutting your own throat many a time if you deal with some of these people because they know people are desperate for work and as such they will literally keep you on a line and run up as much debt as possible and one of the keys that the uh, elements they do this for is because once they owe you two or, two or three weeks 
you are now so frightened that they owe you thousands and thousands of dollars. You'll keep running with them in the hope that they'll pay you. They're just going to run it until you're bankrupt. Simple as that. So, yeah, it's not a nice business to be in on the, this side, telemarketing, telesales. But at the same time, this is why we've moved to um, inbound calls. We've moved to virtual assistance, software development, app development, all the good stuff. The stuff that's actually more interesting for me as a business owner, but also good for the staff because they develop their skills. And if they later decide to go off on their own and set up their own business, I don't care. You know, it may sound a bit strange, but my whole point here is I'd rather help develop people and develop their business skills. If I feared people leaving and setting up a business on their own, I would never run a business. Um, the reality is people are people. If they are good and happy with things and you treat them well, they'll stay. If they're already career and business minded and thinking they want to go on their own, they'll do it regardless. Don't get hung up on it. It's just one of those things. But yeah, learning how to do this isn't difficult. The hard bit is getting paid. Thanks for watching.